And I always identified initially, first as a female, you know, and then as a lesbian. Not, and, and I was always a little bit appalled at the, before the AIDS epidemic, when the community seemed to draw together. You know, gay men were not very kind to lesbians or gay women, because most gay men were more upwardly mobile and most gay women were downwardly mobile. And there was a class thing there too, you know. And, uh, and I was always, so I always very much didn't identify, I didn't, I, I mean, I, of course, my own brother's gay, so I had, uh, and not that I didn't have affection and, and, and relationships, but politically, I drew the line at the, you know, at the, at the gender split, because the men seemed to be much more in, in, uh, in control of their lives and their incomes, and uh, not that I wasn't, I was certainly as a celebrity, but many women that I knew, it was much harder for them in the culture especially women who really identified and looked and dressed as a, a gay woman. I was more involved with feminism, you know, the, ri the rights of women and, and moving ahead in, in the culture <laughs> for the whole female group. Anyway, so um, that, I can't say any more than that. I was immensely popular in the country uh, because of Laugh-In and uh, other stuff. And I, you know, and I don't, and I, my family's uh, Southern fundamentalist. And my mother, uh, it would be tough on my mother, pretty tough. You know, I, my, when, my, when my mother knew that my brother was gay, it about, you know, it was very hard on her. She went to bed for about two months <laughs> because of the Christian thing, you know. And if you have relatives in that part of the country, and I was very close to my family, too. I mean, I had regard for them. But, but because I had, uh, that was my nature anyway, is to, uh, be forgiving of most, whatever, because I knew most humans didn't have a clue what they were doing. They just were here and it's like, you know, it's hard enough in this life. So my mom, I would, so I, I, or, you know, so I would feel that about my mom. I was very worried about my mother being um, hurt or having, you know, if I, if I did anything, uh, you know, she said, I don't know why you have to, you know, do that in public. <laughs> I don't know. And that was a constant, uh, you know, uh, cry. So uh, I tried to walk, you know, I'm sure I tried to walk a line about not be, I just certainly didn't want to be a liar. And, you know, and Jane and I were everywhere together. And when I did interviews, but people didn't write about you. And especially if they had regard for you. And most people in the press had some regard for us. As, as artists. And even recently, a very well-known writer that we really adore, who's, he's not a close friend, but he's a, a friend, a professional friend, you know. And uh, he wrote, even when we had our revival of Broadway in 2000, he made, he try, he skirted everything. It's so funny, isn't it? We, we were more protected by the outside than we tried to protect ourselves. That's what all evolved. I mean, all those were factors in kind of, oh, what am I, you know, how should I deal with this? And then it gets to be kind of indulgent, too. There comes a point where you start to see people like, you know, breastfeeding. I mean, celebrities are going to come out. And also, there's a tremendous amount of pressure from, uh, you know, uh, what, uh, you know uh, coming out day October 11th, and we get a lot of pressure. But we continued, I mean, we always involved ourselves in issues, and and did fundraisers and stuff, but we managed not to be at the, at the center of it, you know. And I also had a, a fear of becoming a poster child, you know, and just being identified every, and I do find that since, since I've been so out publicly in the last 10 years or so, I find that there's a ter much more emphasis on that than on what I'm gonna do, you know. People like, wanna talk about, about my private life more. All through that, through the 70s and 80s, I was very popular, you know. Uh, I mean, I would have, I would have had a, 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 an impact, yeah. I'm sure. Johnny asked me, he said, you're not, knowing full well, he just said, you're not married, are you? And I said, no. And he said, don't you want to have children? And I said, if you mean, do I want to bear children biologically? <laughs> I said, no, I, I really don't. You know, you could hear a pin drop, the audience because that was even, uh, that was audacious at, at that time, is a, a, well, a girl that's not married and a girl that doesn't want to be a mother, what's wrong with her? And, uh, and so I, I broke the ice by just saying, you know, who's got custody of yours? And he made him laugh. You don't have to be straight to play a straight person. 
any more than you have to be gay to play a gay person. I mean, you have to do well. You can't be just a duddy actor. I certainly identified with uh, strong women or women who had the upper hand. Um, like one of my favorite movies was Wicked Woman because I had an old print of it, that, I mean an old dub of it that I got. I, couldn't, I used it on one of my specials, a few little dial switching moments. But I was mad for Wicked Woman because uh, Beverly Michaels, who was about six feet tall, because I, then I collected movie magazines about her, and, uh, and she was a bad woman. I was fixed on bad women and good women because as a female, uh, that's what I meant when I was talking earlier about being involved in feminism or the consciousness of the woman's role in the culture, you know, and what limitations the culture put on it, on that role. And of course the bad women, in fact, Jane uh, did a big article uh, for a magazine once as if she were interviewing me and, uh, and I'm talking about things like this and she says, uh, and in the text she says, uh, you know, uh, the bad woman of course always had to be punished at the end just like a gay person, uh, but she'd say the bad woman always had to be punished at the end, but the good woman, good woman was punished throughout the entire movie. <laughs> I remember uh, a thing about uh, gentlemen prefer blondes, and, uh, and Jane Russell and Marilyn Monroe were singing and dancing, you know, and a lot of uh, cleavage, and, and this older couple were leaving, and the wife is, she's leaving because she doesn't like it. And the, old, the older guy's like hanging back, like a couple in their 60s or something. Back This is back in the 50s. And uh, she's saying, oh, come on. I was an usherette, and I'm standing on duty at the aisle. And she says, come on, they don't have any talent anyway. And he said, they don't need any. You know, and it just like struck a thing right in my gut. I just knew that me that was something that, it, 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 was un it made me uneasy. Bad women had to be punished too. In fact, one of my favorite things about a good woman, bad woman movie was Flame in the Flesh when I was an usherette with Lana Turner. And uh, she was, when she was a brunette and had an uh, Italian boy haircut, and it's shot in Italy, and Pier Angeli was in it, who later committed suicide in real life. Uh, and Carlos Thompson, who was a dark-haired guy, had to bleach his hair blonde because Lana was going to have dark hair. And... Uh, Anyway, she's a bad woman. She does every, just bad stuff, you know. She uses men. I pick up on uh, tough or uh, bad women, picked up on them a lot. That was a big, a big awareness for me was uh, that women had less, uh, less opportunity, less stature. The Moon is Blue with Maggie McNamara, which was an Otto Preminger film. The moon is Blue, Maggie McNamara is like, a little perky, you know, like a little, like little, uh, um, what are the bolero jackets and crinolines and ponytail and a little, like one of those little spring hats, you know, have a little fake flowers on the side, and she uh, and a box purse, and she. That was the first time they said the word virgin on the screen. I've seen pictures of myself with, in situations or with people. I have no recollection. I, someone sent me, in Ron Galella's book, there's a picture of me dancing with Warhol. I have no, and we're like, and we look like we're like at ease. It's not like we're doing some perfunctory, like we're going, like we got funny expressions on our face, and we're, you know, you can see him animated, which you never saw. You didn't remember that. And I said, no, I said, I can't believe this. This is ridiculous. I have no recollection whatsoever. So the stuff that has left my head, I've been sort of dazzled by what has happened in 40 years, and what the younger uh, generation has, you know, really you know, created for all of us um, the openness and the uh, absolute demand, you know, to be acknowledged and just be left alone. I always feel, I feel like so much has happened, so much positive has happened um, in a sh fairly short time. It's just like having a, you know, from, from Martin Luther King to Obama being in the White House. You still had a sense, even if you were with like very hip, people who thought they were like really politically aware and everything, There's, there was always that charge about somebody gay and when they left the room, uh, you always felt like they would reference it. Or they had to make sure that, you know, like, it's still, still a little bit, uh, you know, to roll your, a little, a little bit off center. 
something that we need to acknowledge here to make ourselves okay. And uh, that probably still goes on like mad. I feel like it does. Even when I was doing uh, Moment by Moment with John Travolta and David Anson came on to do a, a production piece, a big production piece, and I remember there was something, oh, he even said to me, I remember in my trailer, he said something like, well, how do you feel about gay people doing a movie about heterosexuals? I said, well, you're going to have to be more specific with me. You know, and he, he, didn't, go, he didn't go any further. I just thought, uh, and I said, did, I said, back in the day of Louis B. Mayer, and people did, did you have to be rich to play rich? Did you have to be poverty-stricken to play poverty? Did Henry Fonda have to be an Oki, you know, in the Dust Bowl to play uh, his that character, that great character? Uh, I, anyway, just, you know, I'm just saying that's a long time ago, but someone like even David Anson saying something so, so uh, limited, 